Hello there, YouTube. Happy Friday. I'm smoking my country gentleman. Joining matches today for some old Joe Krantz. Got the mail today. Stickers came from Jay. Thank you, sir. I appreciate that. Never let not knowing what you're doing stop you from doing it. <laughs> it's a good motto. So I appreciate that. <clears throat> and that, as you know, it is Top 5 Friday. Sitting around trying to think of what to do today. I came up with about 30 ideas. None of them seemed to pique my interest. So I kept thinking. Came up with a couple that I liked. Don't know if you'll find them interesting or not. But I couldn't decide which one to do. So I've got them over here. Number one and number two. We'll call them heads and tails. I'm going to flip that. 1941 nickel. See what comes up. Well, the nickel's laying down there on the ground because my hand eye coordination apparently sucks today. It says heads. <clears throat> so we'll go with heads. Heads was my top five favorite arcade games. I'm not talking about video games and console games and Atari and Nintendo and stuff like that. I'm talking about the ones you went and fed quarters into all day when you were a kid. Go mow a couple of yards, wash somebody's car. Go spend the day at the arcade. These are classic ones. Uh, 79 to 81, all five of these came out. So that was when I was yeah, 11, 12, 13 years old, depending on what part of the year they came out. And I, I bet you bottom dollar I stuck a lot of quarters in these things. There may be better video games. These got most of my money. So without further ado, I'll do them in um, some sort of order. One that came out in 1980. I'd be surprised if anybody remembers this one. It was called Phoenix. And it was the typical, you're at the bottom of the screen shooting stuff that's invading you kind of thing. And they were all birds and uh, spacecraft that resembled birds and stuff like that. They, you know, fluttered around quite a bit. They were, it wasn't like Space Invaders where they were just dropping down. They were all over the place. <clears throat> Somewhat of a challenge. And at the end of every level, there was like this big mothership thing that came down and hovered around and shot down at you and stuff. And you had to shoot through the bottom layer of it. It was kind of like that old game Breakout.
you had to shoot through that to destroy the mothership to move on to the next level. I like that one quite a bit. Another one that came out in 1980 was Tempest. It was one of my favorite games ever, for sure. It had a variety of shapes for the little thing that you had to, to work with on each individual level. Um, you were like this little crab walker looking thing and you had instead of buttons and joysticks you had a dial and you could spin it around and that thing would go all the way around the the edge of the whatever you were fighting and you had a shoot button and that was it some levels were like a big trapezoid you kinda had an infinity thing off in the distance and your guy would go along the bottom and there were different lanes that went up into infinity and coming down those lanes was whatever you had to kill and you would go from lane to lane as you spun that thing across you had to shoot up through them and kill whatever it was coming down at you then the next level may be a circle you could go all the way around it shooting some of them had like a heart shape or a, all kinds of different shapes. It was kind of like, it was similar to Missile Command and you had to shoot the things before they got to the edge. So you had to run around this thing, shoot this one, run back, you know, back and forth shooting all these things. Spent a lot of money playing that. Tempest. Uh, 1981 game came out that was probably one of the most simple designs but most enjoyable. I always liked games that didn't have patterns. You couldn't learn how to beat them. You had to just progressively get better and go further in the game and score more points and whatnot. Like Donkey Kong and Pac-Man. If you learned what the levels were and learn the patterns you could play those blindfolded you might have could, I couldn't I learned the levels of Donkey Kong and I learned quite a few levels of Pac-Man and they just became unenjoyable anyway Frogger came out in 1981 simple game jump the frog across the street and there's streams don't get run over or eaten by crocodiles or fall in the water. Go as far as you can go. Absolutely classic game. There's a, <clears throat> an app that's out now that my kids like to play. I like to play it too. It's called Crossy Road. And it's basically Frogger. Just with a bunch of different characters and different scenarios and stuff like that. Frogger, classic game. <clears throat> 1981, we had this game, uh, a tabletop version of this game in a pizza place I worked at. I'd spend all night making tips and then sit there after closing until all my tips were gone in that machine. <laughs> Galaga, that was a good one. Kind of Space Invader-ish, Space Invader-ish kind of game, but with a lot more movement. You had all these things that would kind of hover above you and, you know, intermittently drop down, try to kill you, drop bombs on you. But before they came down into their little hovering pattern, they would come down in rows, like eight or ten of them at a time would come out on the screen and try to zap you and some would come this way and then they would go up into their position. I got quite good at that game. I got I got so good at that game that <clears throat> I would just have to stop playing it because I wouldn't die. I, would earn, I could earn enough extra lives on that one to just keep going indefinitely. Now 
That was a fun one. To me, the best video game that was ever made, the best arcade game, best design, best concept, everything, came out in 1979. It was one of the early ones. Its simplicity and strategical thinking put together in that game made it absolutely enjoyable. That was Asteroids. Simple concept. Shoot the rocks and stay alive. Easier said than done. I spent a bunch of money playing that game. One day I was in the arcade. I was probably, I don't know, 12, 13 years old, like I said. I saw a guy playing it. <clears throat> And there were no rocks. There was one rock on the screen. One of the little tiny rocks just barely moving. And this guy was zipping across. Just going, you know, back and forth. If you went off this side, you would come back on this side. He was just zipping across there. And every now and then, the little spaceship would come out. And he would fly across there and turn and nail it as he went across. I'd never thought of that before seeing him do it. It was a way to rack up a lot of points and get extra men and stuff like that. But the the fun joy from that game for me was surviving when there were, you know, eight or ten big rocks on the screen and fifteen or twenty middle sized ones and you know, when you were just like out there in the middle of everything. You had to you had to pay a lot of attention to what was going on to survive in that scenario. <clears throat> I remember when the um, Atari 2600 came out. That was one of the one of the first few cartridges that came out with it. it wasn't as good as the arcade version, but I absolutely wore a joystick out playing that game. Those were probably my top five favorite games of all time. There's a, I mean, there's a ton of good ones out there if you were into those kind of games. I never was into the super popular ones. Uh, Pac-Man, Donkey Kong, Miss Pac-Man, all those different ones that people were crowded around playing. There was one more. Um, it's another classic, absolute killer concept of a game. Remember the old game Breakout? <clears throat> Where you had a little paddle at the bottom of the screen, and there was a ball bouncing back and forth, kind of like Pong. And across the top of the screen, there were three levels of bricks. And when the ball hit a brick, it would disappear in the... Uh, My brain just stopped working. The goal was to knock all the bricks out. Well, <clears throat> I believe it was Atari that made this one as well. The, not for just a console, but for you know, stand-up games. There were four. It was a tabletop type version game. There were four, four sides, four players. You each had a spinny controller and a, a fire button. And you each had in your corner of the screen, wherever you were at, you had a little castle like this. This guy had one up here. This guy had one in this corner. So on. And they were made of three layers of bricks like that breakout game. And your little king or whatever was in your castle. Your little warlord was in your castle. It was called Warlords. You had a little paddle that spun around the outside of your castle. And that ball would shoot back and forth. And the, uh, the goal was to be the last man standing. 
you could catch that ball on your paddle if you did it just right. Fire it off at interesting angles. People wouldn't be expecting it. It was a great competitive game. It was one of the best competitive arcade games ever. Another good competitive version. There was one that was, uh, I believe it was called Star Trek. I may be wrong, but it was very similar to Asteroids, but you had two ships. And I believe there was other stuff on the screen as well. And you were trying to kill the other ship uh, as opposed to killing all the rocks. That was a fun one. Anyway, that's my top five <clears throat> arcade games of all time. Let me know what some of yours were. I expect to see stuff like um, I won't spoil it. I won't I won't put anything in your head that's not already there. Other than that, <clears throat> have a good day. I will yak in your direction sometime soon a lot of people commented uh, on one of my previous videos where I talked about not feeling so well wishing me well and things like that I really appreciate that guys um, it means a lot to me that you would take time to comment and say I hope you're feeling better and take care of yourself and stuff like that there was probably a dozen or so people that got in touch with me That's what this community is all about to me. <clears throat> uh, making friends, making contacts, uh, getting in touch with people that you really care about. And uh, There's a bunch of you out there that I genuinely care about and wish you well <clears throat> for various reasons. Anyway, that means a lot to me, and uh, I appreciate it. Thank you very much.